Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Devil with White Wings. Welcome back to the continuation of my stream a day, Final Fantasy XII International Zodiac Job System Edition. Oh, it's a mouthful. Whew. Seal. I believe we are good to go here. In yesterday's episode, um, I had a lot of problems. A lot of problems with getting, you'll notice the seven hours there, up from two and a half yesterday. Um, I had a lot of problems getting Phoenix Downs, because it turns out that in this edition of the game, you can't actually buy Phoenix Downs at the stage of the game that I am at, here with just Vaan. Which is a slight problem, because I really, really need to level up using the Dustier method. There's, like, I could just fight my way up several levels, but it would take so much longer. So, after yesterday's stream, which I ended, if I recall, at roughly 20 or 24 Phoenix Downs, I spent the next four hours, um, oh, hey, Lash and Smash, I looked for your message yesterday and couldn't find it. I'm not too familiar with where Twitch sets these things up. You may have to send it to me again. But yeah, I spent four hours yesterday, um, running out of the village here, Picking up a chest, hoping it was a phoenix down, uh, rinse and repeat. So, now, we have 99 phoenix downs! Yes! So today, we get to go kill Dusty 99 times. Oh, oh please no, come on. Good. <laughs> uh, alright. So, I'm gonna try not to waste too much time here. We're just going to run our way all the way over to the west of sand. And we're gonna go do some grinding. That's right, we're two days into my power leveling livestream. And today's the first day we're gonna be actually power leveling. Hmm. Yeah, that is weird, Lash. Oops, that's not the way I wanna go. And yes, I know, I did say I wouldn't be using this dashing thing all that much, but come on, it saves so much time getting from place to place. I'm not going to use it too much in cities, because you need to go around corners a lot, but when you're just running from the end of one zone to the other and fleeing from all the enemies, why not? Right? <laughs> I'm fully loaded on coffee today as well, brand new mug. Ah. ah, thanks for that lash. I'll actually quickly bookmark that, just in case I lose it. Done. Really? Uh, it's probably just another telemarketer. Seriously, the only people who call my house phone are telemarketers. Ah, uh, thanks for that lash. I'll bookmark that one as well. Uh, no. <laughs> I am not doing the windy uh, west of sand, if you don't mind. So in certain zones of Final Fantasy XII, for those who haven't played it, there are changing weather patterns, and they can affect various different things. But the main one here in the west of sand is the sandstorm. Uh, if you have a sandstorm, your accuracy goes way down, which is real bad for a bow user. And um, you also get slightly different enemy spawns. The enemy spawns wouldn't have affected us, but the, um, the accuracy, well actually for dusty leveling, the accuracy wouldn't have bothered us either. But generally speaking, it's a smart idea to come here when it's not sandstorming, unless you're aiming for the enemies that only spawn in the sandstorm. Made like a dollar off them, and just like the 70 people downloaded my chemist and 50 people downloaded my gunner so far. Hey, good for you. I know quite a few uh, local D&D &D players who might be interested. I'll pass the links on to them. Alright, so, just like we saw yesterday, I'm going to quickly remove my short bow, and we're going to have Vaan slap himself down to under 10% HP.
Now, unlike normal attacks, you do have to queue these up one after the other because a character will not attack themselves or a party member more than once. Unless you have a specific gambit set up to do so. And if you're out there and you haven't played Final Fantasy XII and you're curious what the hell the gambit system is, uh, we'll get onto that in... I'm going to say about two weeks. Alright, one more should do us. We just need to be below 28. Smack. Quickly equip a weapon. We do not want any accidental crits here. Perfect. Alrighty. Next thing to always make certain of when doing this. Battle speed to slowest. Because Dustia will wreck you pretty instantly if you let him get an attack off. I mean, obviously, I'm below 10% health, so you'd assume so. Cast reverse on one person, have the other two hit them with scathe. Yep, that was a, that was an excellent method of healing. Alright, let's get started with our first dustier kill of the day. Now, if you're curious on how to do this yourself, there's a couple tricks to it. The first one is positioning. So, when I first stepped through, I moved back towards the, um, the gate that I passed through. I did that to force Dustia to spawn closer to me. He tries to spawn behind your character. So if you're facing forward and you have the gate behind you, he can't. So he spawns basically randomly. If you're facing the gate, you have this all this open space behind you. Dustia can spawn right there. But then as soon as he spawned, I spun Van around. Because if you're not looking at him, it takes significantly longer for you to be able to target him with an ability. So I should be able to Phoenix down him. Nope. There we go. That's the next trick right there was the instant the Phoenix Down was effective and it killed Dustio, I opened my battle menu here to pause the game. I did that to allow the item that dropped off Dustio to fall to the ground. Because while it's falling, you can't collect it. Once it's on the ground, you can. So now I'm going to quickly exit the battle menu, pick up the item, and then leave before the experience and LP. Uh, raises above Dustia, which means that when we go back through, due to the fact that he's a teleporting enemy and has a very long death animation, we will not be considered to have killed Dustia, even though we've already gained both the loot and the XP for doing so. I know I'm being a bit front heavy on this explanation, but this is like, this is an important couple of tricks to get this right, because we want the loot that Dustia is dropping just because it sells for a ton of gil, not that we need gil for anything right now, we're going to need it later, and because we want Dusty to keep spawning so that we can keep doing this 99 times. Alright, so I'm gonna change a couple quick things. I'm gonna go into the inventory and I'm going to sort Phoenix down. Sort by quantity? Can't I? Huh. Okay. I could have sworn that I could move these. Oh, there we go. That's how we do it. Alright, so now Phoenix down to the top of the menu. I'm going to go into config, cursor position, last selection. I wouldn't recommend actually playing through most of the game like this, but it is handy for when you're doing this sort of thing. So we're going to go through, we'll walk back towards the gate. Turn around. Wait a moment. Phoenix down on Dustia. Pick up the loot. And leave. Now you can do the like, quickly leave the menu, go back into the menu, and make sure that you pick up the item, if you feel like you need to. Uh, I probably will, because I just have like muscle memory for doing it that way from the last time I did this. Yeah, see Dusty has spawned in a different location there. We got lucky and he spawned near to the gate. Alright, should be able to Phoenix down him now. But uh, yeah, that was actually pretty bad on my part. I just stood there. Wasn't using the controller properly. To be fair, the PS4 controller and the old PS2 controller I have have slightly different tolerances on how their joysticks work. There we go. <laughs> Thanks, Lash. Actually, that's a good idea, a good idea. Let's see how far I can get up 
but in the next, uh, hmm, how many do I have left? 96 Phoenix Downs? I'm curious. I started at level 8. Do I have better Twitch TV? I do on, on the web page, but I'm pretty sure that this um, chat program has better Twitch TV enabled by default. So when his uh, claw there, his uh, right hand claw, uh, drifts down to the bottom, that is roughly when you can usually throw a phoenix down at him, if you're trying to get this as uh, efficient as possible. Very lucky on these loot drops. <laughs> is that the is that the hamster dance hamster? <laughs> Hamtaro, yeah. <laughs> God, now I need to go listen to Hamster Dance again. <laughs> like, I, this is like an embarrassing little factoid, but when I was very young, like just starting out in high school, I actually owned the entire Hamster Dance album. Uh, there were there were some good songs on there besides just Hamster Dance. Here, take my word for it. So yeah, when you're doing this kind of thing on the North American version, you can actually start doing dusty leveling super early. You can just chain a whole bunch of wolves, get to like 10 Phoenix Downs, and just start doing this straight away. And if you're lucky enough with the loot drops, you'll get more gill out of it than you spend on Phoenix Downs. Ooh, flame stuff. Nice drop. <laughs> we got one. One. One little flame stuff. How does the flame stuff compare to the short bow? Pretty friggin' well! <laughs> Four. So when... When Zodiac Age comes out, you'll be able to do this with a combination Monk-Archer. And you'll be able to switch the Flame Staff at this point for like a pretty significant DPS boost. Before switching up to the Burning Bow. I don't know how useful that's gonna be. Actually wait, can Monks even use the Flame Staff? It's a rod, isn't it? More of a White Mage thing. Although, I was informed, uh, over on the YouTube comments, that apparently spears, staffs, and rods can all hit flying enemies in this game. Which is something I was totally unaware of. Which is weird, because I've used a lot of spears, staffs, and rods in my earlier playthroughs. Yeah, black mage stuff, that's what I thought. Pretty sure white mages can equip it as well. We're not getting a very high chain level, which is actually good, because as our chain level goes up, we're going to be getting those little uh, little heals when we pick up loot sometimes, which will likely get us out of 10% uh, HP range, and then we'll have to slap Varn a little bit more. I love that level up music. Increases fire spell damage by percentage. Yeah, is that one of the ones where it doesn't say it? Where's, let's see, there was some button you can press. Uh, hang on. I should go to inventory. I'm trying to remember, I could have sworn that you could actually see that effect somewhere. Apparently not. Or I can, just can't find the uh, 
Can't find the button for it right now. So yeah, assuming that, uh, you know, spears, staffs, and rods can all hit flying enemies, which is a bit of an assumption because I'm just going by the word of some random YouTube commentator. Dustier is ugly? Yes. Dustier is indeed ugly, as are all of the, um, the rare spawn creatures that are based on that model. There's a couple of them. I used an auto level up trick on one much later in the game, uh, who is himself not undead. But he summons undead, uh, like, skeletons as his, like, core ability. So I set up a, uh, I set up a gambit setup for my entire party where essentially they would not target him with anything. They would only kill undead enemies. And, yeah, we just sat there and killed things for, like, three straight days with me not even touching the controller. The neutral review parties that got to test the Zodiac Age early. The Esper. No, 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 this is just a random respawn enemy. What's different between this version and the, uh, the North American version? I will answer that question in just a moment. I'm going to try to pick up this sweet loot. Alright, so the major difference between this and the English version was that in the English version, all of your characters had the same uh, license board the same license tree. In this version of the game, you actually get access to 12 different license boards that are all significantly different from one another. They super specialize your character. Like, for example, playing Archer as I am on Vaan here, I can only pick up licenses to do with bows. I can't equip any other weapon on Vaan except for his starting dagger. And that's it. <laughs> Uh, so it lets you kind of customize your party however you want, which is a lot of fun. It makes your characters very, very good at the role that you picked for them. And they also tweaked a lot, like a lot, of the balances of the game. So what used to be somewhat difficult, but then you could like, by the end of the game, every character had every license and you could deal with any threat. In this game, enemies tend to have a lot more health, they do a lot more damage, so you need those specializations to be good at what they do and then build your party correctly in order to overcome those challenges. It's really good and this version of the game only came out in Japanese! The international edition of the game only came out in Japanese. It's infuriating! So th this, what I'm playing right here, is a fan translated version of the game that came out in 2015, I think, and it from what I've been able to get through of it so far, it is complete, it is really well done, and I would recommend it. You can't play this on a North American uh, PlayStation, because you need a Japanese brand, uh, uh, like system, and then that Japanese system needs to be cracked, like chipped, so you can play pirated games in order to... So I'm just emulating this, I, I, can't, I can't go through all the effort of doing all of that. But since we're taking a moment to look at the license board, I will pick up a couple licenses that I'm going to need later on. So now that we've got the battle law here, I'm going to stop going out in that direction. And instead we're going to head up here, because I want to get specifically focus, that's going to increase my damage a lot. And red spiral. And then after that we're going to head down here, because I need this other quickening. Now I could go down here first, but... Heading up is get me, going to get me a ton of HP. As you can see, there's a lot more HP involved in these. And some of the classes, like, by, by specializing in this way, it makes certain elements of the game much more viable. Like, black magic in the original game was only okay if you had the absolute top tier spells. Whereas in this version of the game, because you can get so many magic laws so quickly on a black mage character, you can start very effectively using magic right at the start of the game. Anyway, I just, I believe I just talked for like 10 minutes about uh, the different versions of this game. 
instead of doing what I'm actually supposed to be doing, which is throwing 99 Phoenix Downs on this undead enemy right here. Still, we got a good chain going. We're almost at 20. Magic in this version is just like kicking a dead puppy over and over again. Yeah, they also changed a uh, certain balance on a lot of the low level spells. So in the original version of the game, things like Cure, Fire, Blizzard, Thunder, they were all single target spells. In this version, they are all AoE spells. So your Black Mage can nuke down whole groups of enemies incredibly easily right from the start of the game. It's super broken and I love it. Because it's, it's not actually broken, because they buffed all the enemies, but you, you get the idea, I'm sure. So right now, at the stage of the game that I'm at, there's not a ton of differences, because you're still going to be on your own a lot. But uh, as we get deeper into the game, which we may or may not, depending on how quickly my power leveling works, um, we will see some of the major differences, and some of the real, like, dangerous threats in this game. I really hope I get a chance to, like take on Yasmat before the remaster comes out. And I mean, when the remaster comes out, I will take on Yasmat in that as well, but... Oh no. Okay, we didn't heal. Sweet. <laughs> so we're not actually going to get a ton of license points from doing this. We're only going to kill Dustier a hundred times, and he only gives, what, like three license points? So there's a very good chance that before we go get the burning bow, I'm going to have to do some license point farming. Plan on fucking up Yasmet with my death squad? Yeah. I mean, one, one of the things that really irritated me about the North American version, especially because, you know, I'm, I enjoy this kind of, like, power leveling nonsense, is um, if you power leveled like this at the beginning of the game, in the, you know, North American, English, non-international version. You could just unequip all weapons, give every character all the battle laws and the brawler ability, and no enemy in the game could stop you. You were doing, like, capped out damage straight away, forever. And the unique thing about brawler was that it completely ignored enemy armor. So it didn't even matter. <laughs> that you were fighting enemies who should be able to avoid this damage, you just wreck them anyway. Whereas in this version, I believe Brawler is exclusively a monk skill. Uh, no, he teleported. The teleport is what you really don't want to see, because it prevents you from targeting him for an extra second. It also moves him unpredictably. Yeah, I didn't even get the item that time. Brawler with a dodge shield? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be pretty good. We're getting very lucky on these pickups. We're not getting a single heal so far. Oh good. For some reason Twitch was showing me as offline for a second there. I got very worried. But, uh, we, we appear to be back. I'm guessing that was a problem on my end. I don't think the stream actually dropped at all. We're third of the way there, boys. I'm curious to see how high level I'm going to be able to get like this. I'm hoping to be able to get to like 30. That would be good. I'm beginning to suspect with the uh, speed of leveling slowing down a little bit. Might not quite make it to where I want to be. Uh, 
Because, yeah, if we don't level up enough to where I want to be at the end of this, uh, I'll probably do some offline uh, Phoenix Down farming again. And uh, we will continue the dustier leveling until we're up high enough level to kill the, um... Hang on. Oh, I had the name. Ah, oh, come on. Come on, streamer. You can do this. Uh, uh, dive talents! Oh. You gotta kill dive talents. That's, that's the whole goal of this thing. Very lucky on these chains as well. I've had um, attempts at doing this where I've gotten up to like chain level 4 by 30 dustiers, which you'd think would be a good thing. That's like very lucky to get such a high chain level on so few enemies. But at chain level 4, you're healing like every other pickup and you're constantly having to stop and slap yourself. It's actually like a huge pain in the ass. Uh, and as I say it, we get to stream level 3. Stream level, chain level 3. My stream is not leveling up, I swear. Alright, that was that was MP. We want we want mana to be increasing and not health. Uh, as kind of a insurance, I'm going to jump in here and hopefully pick up some health nodes. Ooh, we might not even be able to reach health. Nope. That's the first one there. Oh well. We can probably heal up once without it taking us out of 10%. Uh, nope. <laughs> no, we can't. Okie dokie. So now it begins. Yeah. Took us down pretty far, actually. I feel like that was going to be a combo. I, I didn't actually wait to check the animation, but I felt the combo coming. So, now that I'm kind of set in the uh, whole dustier thing here, how are you guys doing in chat today? I mean, we have like three times as many viewers as I normally have, so that's... Thanks! <laughs> Appreciate it! <laughs> Another flame stuff. And that's thirty nine dust, yes. I'm just gonna quickly fuck with this thing here. Ugh, God, the light so blinding. Giving Fran the Orochi, 32 evade, 32 combo, 102 damage, 20% chance to poison. <laughs> nice. I like it. Coffee's going all cold. Hang on, gotta gotta give it a warm up from the thermos.
So after yesterday's stream, I uh, quickly went through it. I was planning on doing a sort of editing thing on it before I put it on YouTube, and I ended up not doing that because it would have taken roughly 15 hours to render and then upload because of my stupid Australian internet. But um, I did notice that I was drinking an in like a not healthy amount of coffee on yesterday's stream. Uh, I had four cups total, and uh, yeah, not not safe probably ah that's better I mean it's my own fault for doing this in what is essentially for me the relatively early morning but So yeah, on the topic of changes between the uh, North American version and the Zodiac job system version, certainly the most annoying is the fact that you can't purchase Phoenix Downs when you're Vaan on his own. Seriously, I, I get why it makes doing exactly what I'm doing right now a lot less convenient and easy, but good lord it was annoying to get all these Phoenix Downs. <laughs> like, you can go back and check that stream from yesterday where I spent like was it 45 minutes just getting 20 Phoenix Downs that that did not change all the way up to 99 I mean it, it wasn't that bad I put on a movie just zoned out thought about other things another flame stuff I like that but even sorry it shouldn't <laughs> why why you make a guy you know, play a game for 7 hours just to get 99 <laughs> Phoenix Downs Ooh, train level 4. Actually, I should probably check on how many books of Orgain I have. We were getting a lot of drops early on, so I might be coming close to the cap. Uh, nope, only 40. I am dumb. I am a, I am a dumb, stupid man. I can't count. Uh, teleporting. Ass. Alright, didn't heal up. Do characters join at a certain level or do they join based on uh, current party's level? Uh, all characters levels as they join the party are based on Vaan's level. Only Vaan. So for Pinello, Fran, and uh, Balthia, they all join at Vaan's level plus one. For Barsh, Ash, uh, is it just Barsh and Ash? I think it's just Barsh and Ash. They join at Vaan's level plus two. So if I wanted to be like real particular, I could level Vaan up to level 98, and then everyone else would join the party at level 99. I could level them up to level 97, and half the party would join at level 99. But uh, my plan for this Streamer Day series is to take Vaan all the way to level 99 and hopefully have a ton of license points as well. Speaking of license points, we have a few. So that um, all characters join at max level so that we can just tear the game a new asshole. Alright, next level of health is going to be 30. Which is 4 dustiers. Well, four dust years away, I should say. So yeah, that's why leveling as Vaan is so effective, because once other party members join the party, you do actually split XP amongst the party. So, of course he got health. So Vaan on his own is actually getting triple XP, basically. Got to be below 70, one hit should do it.
And yeah, effectively, that's why doing something like the uh, dustier leveling method is so effective before anyone else joins the party. Even if you're not going all the way to level 99 like me, which you don't need to. You you can... So Ivana's getting triple XP, and once he's 99, everyone joins at 99. Yes, effectively. Uh, if he's at 98, everyone joins at 99 as well. Since they join uh, one or two levels higher than Vaughn. But yeah, uh, you don't actually need to hit max level in this game in order to beat it. You can quite comfortably beat most of the content a long way away from max level. But um, this, is, this is a personal goal that I'm doing here. I want to have, have Vaughn hit max level before July 11th. And it's gonna happen. I'm, I'm gonna do the thing. Good, didn't heal me. Level 21, hype! I kind of feel like the stream today needs music or something. the healing so if I wanted to do this more efficiently I would run off to Rabinasta I would heal and then I'd come back and reset that chain level so that I wouldn't be healing every couple of uh, drops but I actually do want these drops yeah we're only on 50 books of all game which are not the most uh, like, not the most gill-worthy item that he drops, the, uh, the flame staffs actually sell for more. But if I can get up to, like, 99 books of Orgain, I'll be able to sell them for a crap ton of money. So if we get there before using all 99 Phoenix Downs, we will run off, sell them, save, and come back. But for now, we're just gonna keep going. Oh, but it is starting to get real annoying. <laughs> oh, the healing. Always with the healing. Do not combo. Alright. One more hit. Definitely do not combo. And if you're wondering why I'm doing this with unarmed and not with the short bow, when the short bow would probably work, it's not that much more damage than Vaan unarmed. Um, the bow can crit, and Vaan's fists cannot. Uh, if I get a crit, there's nothing I can do about it. If I get a combo with the fists, I can interrupt it by re-equipping the bow. So that's why you don't do this with the bow. <laughs> Heal me. Oh, Christ. Uh, I think we can probably get some more licenses. Probably just one health upgrade, but still, every little bit counts. And if you're curious as to how I'm going to grind license points after doing this, because it seems pretty clear to me that I'm going to need to. Uh, of course, he teleports. Yeah, it seems pretty clear to me that I'm going to need to grind license points. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. I pressed the wrong button there. I didn't bring up the battle menu. I'm hoping that I got out just in time. Come on. I did. Excellent. Woo, boy. Almost fucked the combo there. Sell some flame saves. But no, um, what was I saying? Yes, uh, after leveling up a whole bunch like this, I should be able to one-shot most enemies in, like, the Ester Sand. So I will just run around murdering everything I can find until I have enough license points to get my second quickening. Second quickening? Probably just the first level quickening, even. The first level quickening is going to do more damage. Just massively mashing level 1 quickening will kill a dive talon quicker than like a combination of ones and twos you can fuck up a combination pretty easily 
So yeah, I'll probably just aim for one qu level of quickening, just Red Spiral. And if there's anyone out there who doesn't know what uh, quickenings are in this game, it's basically limit breaks. Every different version of Final Fantasy has their own concept of what a limit break is. In this game, it is quickenings. And they work very differently to how they do in like Final Fantasy VIII, Final Fantasy VII, X, what, what have you. You don't build up a quickening over time. I mean, you, you kind of do. But essentially, you go into battle with a quickening charged, and you can use it whenever you want. If you use it, then it is depleted and you have to kill a bunch of enemies to get back, or touch a save crystal. But yeah, they, it's like you can start a fight with a massive bomb quickening if you happen to have them. And against most bosses, it is by far the easiest way of starting off against them until the bosses get stupid levels of health. Then you need to actually have a plan to deal with them. Why am I not picking this up? Goodbye. Oh, three flame staves. I'm glad I kept trying that one. <laughs> yeah, like he has, Matt. Um, if you haven't played this version of the game before, I'm not sure if you have Lash, the judges are... Oh boy, they are on a totally different level to someone like Yasmat. Yeah, it... Yeah, oh, um, I've played through this game once in a relatively casual way. Um, the judges were just unkillable. Just, just impossible. And hell yeah, there was three flame staves. <laughs> That's true, the judges don't have the health that Yasmin does, but they attack five times faster. <laughs> that's that's a thing. Alright, so because he teleported, I'm guessing his item's gonna be annoying as hell to pick up again. Assuming he drops one, which he did. And away. Two-thirds of the way there, boys. Whew. Just 32 more Phoenix Downs to go. Let's double-check our books of Orgain. And our Flame Staffs, I guess. 65. We have 11 Flame Staffs. I'm probably going to hold on to two. Two feels about it. Just for, like, early game equipping of uh, Mage-type characters. Always with the healing. <laughs> Gotta actually be careful now, because as Vaughn's leveling up, his unarmed damage is increasing significantly. So let's first. Alright, we'll pick up Charm. So, what's our best way of getting to focus? Can either go through Traveler or two health upgrades. Hmm, I wonder which I'm going to do. Yeah, the two health upgrades. Um. Alright, so we could go through Revive afterwards and save like 40 LP, but lose out on a quarter of a thousand health. Hmm, that's actually... that is quite a question. <laughs> health is going to be very important later on in the farming, so we don't get just annihilated by the dive talons during early burning bow farming.
didn't punch myself in the face. That would be why there's no uh, no dust yet there. Got distracted with the licenses. Okay, we're gonna be below 93. That should be relatively easy with a single hit. kind of curious there's one thing that's been on my mind a little bit lash you may be able to answer this for me on the zodiac jobs for zodiac age did they go with the name hunter or shinobi for that uh, particular class because i've seen it translated both ways uh hunter in this version but uh, online i've seen it uh, translated as shinobi because they are like a knife wielding class hunter Shikari, right. Neither? What name do they give it in uh, Zodiac Age? Or is it Shikari? Alright, so what, what level did I say I was aiming for? Mid-30s? We're gonna be uh, a little bit short of that, I think. <laughs> Might not make it to 25. So I've been called Bushi. Yeah. I mean, Bushi would be the... Well, I, Samurai, of course, is like a class within uh, traditional Japanese culture, but Bushi is literally just means swordsman, so... Time and Red Mages being called Battle Mages. Hmm. I mean, I can imagine Red Mages being called Battle Mages. Ah, damn health! <laughs> Screw you and your four books. I don't want your health. didn't heal me. Also, two flame stuffs. I have seen the four flame stuff drop before. It's pretty crazy. It's one interesting thing that I like about uh, Final Fantasy XII is that uh, Gil is actually a very useful thing in this one and it's not that easy to get like it is in a lot of other Final Fantasy games. So for example in most Final Fantasy games you can grind battles and you will get Gil from those battles fight enough battles, get enough gil for whatever you might need. Final Fantasy XII, you don't get gil for battles. At all. You, you only get gil from, like, completing hunts, but you don't get a lot, and from selling uh, enemy drops. And from chests, I should say. Flame stuff? Well, it would appear that my housemate has decided to uh, join the house. Hopefully he's not going to start playing hard rock music or something. Teleport. Alright, just 20 Phoenix Downs left, ladies and gents. Or potentially lady and, and gent. Or, or just gents. I mean, there's two people watching, so I don't know. So I know I'm making this dustier thing look uh, insanely easy, but I swear it isn't. 
I mean, it kind of is. It, it definitely is. It's, it's stupidly easy and a very effective way of leveling super early on. The only thing that makes it not terribly effective in Zodiac Age slash International Zodiac Job System Edition is the stupid rarity of the goddamn Phoenix Downs. Come on. Like, I know I've already talked about that twice in this stream, but the hours and hours of grinding the same chest over and over and over again. <laughs> I just, uh, uh. I'm actually kind of curious, with Zodiac Age coming out, there's going to be a lot more people playing this version of the game than there are right now. Like, there's, there's some Japanese info out there for this game, there's a few guides and so on that don't have a lot of info, weirdly. But, um, yeah, with a lot more people playing, uh, we're probably going to see a lot more strategies for, like, early game leveling and so on coming out. And I'm curious to know if there's going to be better methods than uh, dustier grinding now that Phoenix Downs are annoying. Hmm. Could be very interesting. I mean, that's always the way with stuff like this. Like, um, the Dark Souls 1 community got, some, you know, more interesting once it kind of shifted to PC, and the market for that game became larger. Yeah, you knew that health. Ah! Uh, I was hoping to get through all 99 dust years without making that mistake. So where is dust year? We basically have no control over where he spawned now. Yep, it's between me and the wall. That is not where I want him to be. Can't target him until he finishes teleporting. Can't target him yet. Please. Come on. Please do not dark me. That was very close. He was just about to finish casting dark and that would have easily one-shot me. <laughs> Woo! Alright, time to punch myself again. Your foot feels dead. Yeah, that's why I keep changing positions slightly on the stream. <laughs> Alright, so probably two attacks to get down to 10%, if I had to guess. Yep. Now, a combo here would kill me, so let's not. Do you know about Extra Life? The uh, Extra Life, the charity? doing it with friends this year yeah yeah no oh, that sounds pretty cool do you have anything in particular you're planning on streaming maybe we're doing a rhythm game called sound voltex Interesting. So anything like uh, audio stuff? Variety things. Well, yeah, if you're doing like a streaming marathon, you basically have two choices. You can do like a massive 100% style, almost like speedrunning kind of thing, or you can do a variety show. And variety is probably going to entertain more people than one thing for, you know, 24 hours or however long you're planning on doing it. Like DDR, Beatmania, DJ Hero, and Audio Surf all in one. <laughs> that sounds interesting. 
Speaking of uh, long stream kinds of things, yeah, yeah, please link it. Go right, go right ahead. But um, speaking of long stream kind of things, just the like in the last week, a uh, old PS2 game came out on the PS4, Star Ocean till the end of time. Came out in North America under the name like Star Ocean Three. Uh, it was one of my favorite like JRPGs from the PS2 era. It came out I think before Final Fantasy XII. I don't know where I rate them against each other because they're very very different in style. But um, after it came out, I got kind of interested in the speedruns of it because I'm generally interested in speedruns of video games, especially the ones I like. So I looked it up. There's only a handful of uh, speedruns recorded of Star Ocean 3. And they're all played on the normal difficulty. So there are no, as in zero, recorded speedruns of the hard mode. So myself and my uh, best friend Nathan were like, hmm, we've beaten the game on hard mode before. <laughs> if, uh, if I could set up a stream, which would be relatively easy, of the game and we beat the hard mode of it in a single sitting just like you skipping all the story and just beating the game as quick as we could we could become world record holder holding speedrunners <laughs> with essentially zero effort so that's a thing that might happen uh, after Final Fantasy 12 comes out whoops One more. Do not kill yourself, um. Yeah, thanks for that, Lash. I'll give that a look after the stream. We're on the final stretch here, by the way. Not many Phoenix Downs left. mind fucky. Well, one would hope so. Teleport. Probably gonna make it a huge pain in the ass to collect his loot. Nope. Got it. I think we're on level 24, aren't we? Oh, I'm not looking forward to farming more friggin' Phoenix Downs. But even though I'm nowhere near the level of the guy in the video, the game is super fun. I believe you. A lot of the, like, musical, rhythm-based games are just, just a lot of fun to play. Like, I probably clocked in, like, a hundred hours of uh, audio surf when I was young and didn't have anything better to play. And he was you know, hugely into all sorts of music at the time. Twenty-five. Yep. I believe I called it roughly half an hour ago that that was probably going to be about where we got to. Ooh, I just, I don't know if 25 is going to be strong enough, even if I can get to a quickening, which I'm going to have to grind a lot of LP to get to a quickening. Should probably check my books of all game as well. <laughs> I've not done that in a little while. 99. But we do have only two Phoenix Downs left, so we may as well use them. Dust you to 100? No. 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 <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Oh, God, no. Dust you... It, it, just doesn't give enough XP. I don't know if, if memory serves, Dustier gives like a 1100, 1200 XP per kill. The dive talents are like two and a half grand or something. So if you can kill them effectively, it is way better. Can I afford the next license? I think I might. Not quite. Which wouldn't even get me enough XP anyway. Or enough health, I should say. Oh, 
Like, Dustia stops being efficient roughly where we're getting to, like at around level 30. It's just not terribly efficient anymore. Mostly because the, um, the LP is real bad on Dustia compared to the XP. <laughs> Last Phoenix down. Ah. Uh. Ah, oh, the stream's only been up for an hour. It took me like five to get these fucking things. Oh, God. Alright, let's throw it. That's- no, 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 no. We're not- we're not throwing- No! No, it's gone! Ah! I used the fucking- Ah! Hang on. Run away! It didn't- it didn't throw. It didn't throw. Please. Come on. Give me that phoenix down back. Okay. Okay, we still have it. We still have it. <laughs> let's let's kill one more dust here. Seems rather confused. Dustier. And one more loot. Four books of all gain. Ninety-nine chain. Yeah, 1100 XP. So yeah, the main reason why you want to do the Dive Talon leveling as opposed to the Dustier leveling once you're capable of killing the Dive Talons. And I'm just going to throw a potion or two on myself here. Also, swap this back up to fast. Swap this over to default. Eh, that should be enough health. Yeah, as I was saying, the main reason you want to do Dive Talents as opposed to Dustier, Dustier is only giving you those three license points each time. If you're doing the Dive Talon path correctly, you're getting somewhere in the region of, what was it, 12,000 XP per run through the area, and like 25 license points. So it becomes way more efficient at both, if you can do it. So saved. That's a lot of clan rank points. Shame the clan rank points actually don't do jack anything. So we're gonna go sell all the books of Orgain and most of the flame stars we just gathered. Then we're gonna head back into the west sand. We're gonna head all the way over to the other end. We're not even... No, we're not. Because we don't even have a quickening. We're not even close to a quickening. <laughs> oh god. Oh my word. So in order to reach the nearest quickening, which is down here, we still need... It's about a hundred, another hundred, two hundred, so like four hundred, about five hundred license points to reach that one. And if we want to get the one up here, which I would prefer, it's 140, we'll go the cheap way, 180... So, about 400. <laughs> Either way. Ugh, okay. We're gonna go sell these friggin' books of okay. For Before I make any rash decisions, we're gonna go sell these things. No sprinting in town, White Wing. No sprinting in town! <sighs> I'm just thinking, so my options now are uh, I could go resume the Phoenix Down farming. That would be very easy. Uh, I would be able to get a bunch of Phoenix Downs again. 16, not bad. Uh, we're only going to hold on to 2. Sell loot. I would like to sell 99 books of all game, thank you very much. Let's just sell these. So that's a bunch of gold. So yeah, I could go farm the uh, cr ever living crap out of the Phoenix Sands again. Do more dustier leveling, hopefully get up to like level 30. Trouble is, in this version of the game, I don't actually know what level I need to be at for 
a solid quickening chain to be able to kill a dive talent. I imagine it's going to be pretty similar to the North American version, so probably like level 30 and like 6 red spirals in a row to kill one. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, let's go see how quickly I can kill things now. I should be significantly stronger. I did pick up that battle lore, which is going to increase my damage significantly. And I am significantly higher level, which, again, is going to increase my damage significantly. So even though I'm still using the same old short bow, I should be able to one-shot most enemies out here in the Esther Sand. Cactors. Try it on the wolf. I'm not going to try and kill the, the T Rex off. Yeah, 127. So I'm not even one shotting these guys by a significantly high amount. I mean, I, I am one shotting them, but not by a ton. See, didn't even one shot that cockatrice right there. So LP grinding is not going to be very easy. <laughs> hmm. Phew. Now if I had focus and max health I'd be doing more damage, but... Actually, I can... Well, like Cockatrice, yeah, definitely. I can actually show just how much health this beast of a lizard over here has. We'll pick up the bangle. And we'll equip the bangle so that we have Libra. At the cost of a little bit of defense. And we'll go take a look at this guy. How's it going? So if I target him... Wild Saurian is level 29 and has 6,001 health. That is, remember, I'm doing about 130 damage a shot. That's not gonna work. <laughs> I mean, if I can get to a quickening and I can get a real good quickening chain going, maybe, maybe I can do that much damage. So, I think, I think we're gonna have to do a combination. We're going to have to LP farm to get to a quickening, and we're going to have to do more dustier level grinding in order to just be high enough level that my quickenings will do enough damage to the dive talons. So I don't think that either one is going to be enough. I don't think having quickenings at all, like at this level, is going to be what, uh, what uh, gets me there. Even though I can LP grind super quickly, Due to the dash. It'd be nice if I had gambits, but I can't do anything. This is like the first enemy we see. It's gotta be weak. Yeah. Yeah, no. One does not simply fuck with the giant T-Rex. I mean, it was the same in, what, Final Fantasy VIII? Where what, you could uh, run into a T-Rexor in the first area of the game. And they actually had to add a specific, like, tutorial message to say, Hey, run from this thing. Oh, notice this. This is something that's unique to the Zodiac Job System Edition. Some magics in the game you don't actually get the ability to buy from shops. So silence here. This chest, I believe it's 100% spawn. I think most of the abilities that you can pick up from chests are 100% spawn. Uh, yeah, this, this chest always contains silence, and you cannot buy silence anywhere else. Yeah, in 8 they scale with you, but only by level, not by damage. So the T-Rex all starts out being way stronger than you are. <laughs> I mean, it's also easy enough to kill. I mean, uh, the way I usually did it was just um, playing card games to get a bunch of uh, Tonbreeze. Card modding the Tonbreeze in Chef's Knives, status attack magicking the uh, Chef's Knives into death, and then status uh, junctioning death... 100% uh, onto my weapon because they had zero resistance to death 
so you could one-shot them with anyone. It was hilarious. Yeah, you could actually get through a lot of the game just by doing that, because most enemies were not immune to death for the first, like, half of Final Fantasy VIII. And for the second half, your disjunction drained so that you're constantly healing with every attack. As I was saying, this would be a lot easier if we had, um, gambits. Because then my character would be automatically targeting nearby enemies. I love Dave's junction system, actually. I never really cast magic with anyone short of life and cure. We just avoided junctioning those. Yep, same here. Although, Kuraga specifically was uh, amazing on uh, health junction. You could cap out your health in like probably half an hour into the game by getting uh, life magic refine and refining tents into Kiraga. <laughs> so I still haven't decided if I'm going to LP grind or uh, chest grind. As I said, I'm probably going to be doing a combination of both. Helpful if I had a stronger weapon, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. Crit did two hundred and fifty five damage there. Hey, you were going up in the world. Like the weapon system though, having to farm parts to upgrade when all but scores were kind of pointless since it was minimal stat increases. Yep. I believe... Who was it? There was someone in Final Fantasy VIII where upgrading the weapon actually did matter because you could get to like 255% accuracy. So like infinite accuracy can never possibly miss. Let's... Check it out. We can kill Ichthons now. I'm actually doing this on purpose. <laughs> Sophie? Uh, selfie. By that point, you aren't missing anyway. That's fairly true if you have, um, like, accuracy judgment, uh, um, junctioning. I don't remember if that was what it was even called, but, uh... Yeah, I've killed the wrong things, haven't I? Yeah. There's a rare spawn in here that you can uh, trigger pretty easily, but um, you have to kill all enemies in the zone, but none of the cactors. So I fucked that up. So let's go save. Uh, may as well dig in some more glorious potion farming. Uh, well, Phoenix down farming. Uh, yeah, Squall always had perfect accuracy. He was amazing. He could still technically miss, but you had to be affected by a. Um, like blindness for him to be able to miss. And even then you still hit most of the time. Besides, if you were using Squall to actually physically attack and not just keep him at like 10% health and limit break every single enemy all the time, you were doing it wrong. So you're a fan of uh, Final Fantasy VIII, eh, Lash? Did you ever get that uh, fabled Disc 1 before doing anything else uh, Lionheart?
Got a bangle. I would never spam Renzo Cucan. Never. May stream sometime and get it. Eh, it uh, takes a lot longer than it needs to. <laughs> Um, there's like two methods towards getting an early, uh, an early Lionheart in Final Fantasy VIII. You can get ten Elm Oil cards, refine them through a couple of different processes to get, uh, ten of the twelve pulse ammo you need for the Lionheart. And then just play through the game to a point where you can get a, a handful of pulse ammo relatively early regardless, and then get the Lionheart then, which is early disc two. Or, you can get 20 Elm Oil cards and get uh, the full 20 pulse ammo, which is super annoying. Alright, what I'm going to do here, I'm actually going to reload that save. And I'm going to see if we can get this rare spawn to pop up, just to demonstrate it. There's a good chance I'm not going to be streaming for all that much longer, simply because we've, we've reached today's goal. We killed Dusty 99 times. I didn't die like a scrub, we've got a whole bunch of gill, we've got a whole bunch of levels, and now I need to figure out how I'm going to do the next part. But at the very least, I can demonstrate how to get this dude to spawn. I'm not going to be able to kill him, my weapons are way too shit. If I had Quickenings, I might be able to get a lucky one and kill it, but not without Quickenings. So, what we need to do is kill everything in this zone except for the Cactos. We're going to start with the Icthons. Light Woven Shirt. Interesting. Must be a rare drop. Give me extra defense and magic power. Neat. Just gotta remember, no cactus. I can see the wolves respawning behind me. So the way this one works, it's kind of similar to like a spawn list. So each of these enemies can respawn multiple times, but once they're done respawning, the game needs to spawn something else, and in this particular zone, it can spawn a uh, rare mob, similar to Dustia, except, you know, way harder to kill than Dustia. Let's make sure I miss anything over here. All good. Wolves. Cockatrice. Wolf. Cockatrice. Another cockatrice. No, that's a Nickthon. Wolves are respawning. Yeah. 
This is also me sneakily getting some LP grinding in before the end of the stream. <laughs> what if I can get focus? Yep, I'm exactly at focus. Okay, so from here, if we want to get to Red Spiral, and we do, it's uh, 110 LP to get adjacent, and then 125. So 235 LP is all I'd need to be able to go quickening. I could probably farm that up in not much time at all. Again, with the dash helps a lot. Don't know why Van stopped attacking there. Wolf. Take a careful look. I don't want to accidentally run into this enemy, because he would wreck my day. It's also entirely possible that I'm doing this wrong. Oh, well, there he is. Gotta move away. So I'll use the, uh, the bangle and show what that fella has in terms of health and so on. So just gotta get close enough that I can target him. So Greedon over here uh, is unliberable. So we don't know how much health he has, what level he is, but we do know that he's way higher level than us. Because we level 25 and his name is in red. Not going to fuck with him today. Someday in the future, maybe, but not right now. Also, let's equip the Orachia amulet again. Looking at stuff? I mean, so am I. Alright, we'll go save. I want to test focus, because we just picked that up. It should give us significantly more damage when we're at full health, which is not going to happen a lot of the time. But it's better than not having it. So we're doing what, like roughly 130-ish damage with this weapon without focus? So let's go shoot a wolf and see what we're doing now. Also, Phoenix down. Phoenix down, please. Yeah. Hundred and ninety. So that is quite the damage boost. I mean that may have been just a high damage hit. It might not all be like that. Hundred and eighty three, no, they seem pretty good. Hundred and sixty five against a high level enemy. So that's gonna give us a significant damage boost a lot of the time. It'll let us let us fight higher level enemies ish. It'll let us one shot slightly higher level enemies, which is nice. But I think that's gonna do it for today's stream. Between now and tomorrow, I'm going to Really I really don't want to say this. I'm going to farm another 99 Phoenix Downs. Again. I think I got my technique down, so what took like four and a half to five hours last time should only take me like three-ish hours this time. Again, I'm not going to stream that, because that's even more boring than dustier grinding. Ugh. But I, I need to do it. We, we're gonna need the XP from another 99 Dustiers just to get to the point where I can get the Burning Bow. And there, that is our goal, right there. So, from killing another 99 Dustiers, we're gonna get roughly 300 license points, which is gonna be more than enough to get us to Red Spiral. Then we're gonna need to do a little bit of license point grinding to get down to Bows 5, which is down here. Luckily that's not gonna be as much, a lot of these are way lower uh, cost. In fact, if we go down through the armor path, it's going to cost...
cost like maybe a couple hundred LP. So not a big deal at all. Oh, I need to stretch my legs. My legs going to sleep. But oh, I'm afraid that's going to do it for today, guys. Oh, kind of a short stream, only an hour and a half. But we got our goal, which we did not do yesterday, even slightly. So I consider this to be a result. <laughs> Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this playthrough, well, I say playthrough, this power leveling run of uh, Final Fantasy XII International Zodiac Job Edition as much as I am, because this, this is a lot of fun. I've done the power leveling in other versions of this game before. Doing it solo was fun, but doing it with you know, an audience and people to talk to is so much better. So I will be back tomorrow, the uh, same time, same channel, same shirt, probably. Um, and I hope you guys have a lovely day, night, evening, whatever you happen to be doing. I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye now.